cases showing the diversity of bone disease, of clinical diversity of bone disease. Please. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, there are three reasons why this disease is so important for us. Number one, we have uh, one of the biggest registries of hypophosphatation patients in the world and the best documented registry of this patient. Number two, this is a, a cooperation project. This is one of the cooperation uh, projects we do with CEE countries. We started with uh, Europaia, with Slovakia, and we have at least five patients from Slovakia in our registry. So this is an example how a cooperation uh, makes it very important to increase the patient numbers. And number three is, this is one of the very, very rare bone diseases where we have a therapy. There has been a, a, a medical therapy developed for this disease and uh, we will take part on one of the first registration studies to uh, treat hypophosphatation of the adults, which is probably started by next year in the United States, in Germany and in Austria, in those three countries having the biggest registries uh, on hypophosphatation. This is our last publication last year done from a PhD student in our group giving an, an overview on this disease. What is hypophosphatation? It's rare. It can affect uh, people in all ages and is a, a loss of function of the alkaline phosphatase gene. So it's due to a mutation in the gene encoding the, the non-specific total alkaline phosphatase causing a low alkaline phosphatase activity leading to a substrate accumulation extracellular of inorganic pyrophosphate, pyridoxal phosphate <coughs> and PEA which are very important substrates in the bone and in the brain. So how is the pathophysiology? This is normal bone mineralization and this non-specific total alkaline phosphatase dephosphorylates uh, inorganic phosphate on the osteoblast mem membranes producing pyrophosphate and phosphate and this is important for forming well-functioning hydroxyapatite crystals. If there is no or low alkaline phosphatase activity, this leads to an accumulation of pyrophosphate and we know that pyrophosphate is a very potent inhibitor of bone mineralization. You see the accumulation of those substrates if they are not further metabolized because the enzyme activity is lacking. So how about the brain? And we know that the pyridoxal 5-phosphate is like vitamin B6, it's the active form of vitamin B6 and in normal physiology alkaline phosphatase dephosphorylates pyridoxal phosphate producing pyridoxal and this can cross the cell membrane in the central nervous system and the low activity can result in this PLP intracellular uh, deficiency causing all kinds of neurological disorders 
uh, ending up in epilepsy, for example. Another very important thing is that uh, we never look on the lower <coughs> range of normal value in ELP, we only look for the elevated levels. And look, in, in the younger ages, there is a completely different normal, defined normal range. And therefore, in younger people, we very often do not really take into account that this is relatively age-dependent and this, although a high number, but still uh, too low for normal function. Therefore, there are many cases not identified because not seen. So there are three different uh, possibilities of low alkaline phosphatase um, levels in some very, very low uh, rare diseases and HPP, transiently low in OI, in uh, under function of thyroid, Cushing's disease, under uh, bisphosphonate therapy and probably also under, under, uh, under uh, every antiresorptive medication you can also find low alkaline phosphatase levels and also other diseases uh, also during uh, cardiac therapy or other uh, interventions. If you look on the standard parameters in bone diseases, vitamin D, PTH, phosphate, calcium, uh, critical food phosphate, and LB, the only disease where there is, there are a lot of diseases with elevated alkaline phosphate, but only one uh, disease with low and this is hydrophosphatasia, so therefore uh, in principle, very easy to be detected. So, when should we think about HPP? It's whenever there are dental problems, when there are skeletal or bone problems, joint problems, or the symptom of fibromyalgia, you should consider also HPP, and also in lung diseases, neurological diseases, in nephrocalcinosis or hypercalcuria, growth development disturbances, uh, then you have to think about, could it be also due to uh, too low alkaline phosphatase? There are different forms of HPP. It's the perinatal, in uterine, and in birth, which are very, very high mortality rate in the infantile, childhood and adult, and the so-called childhood onset adult form. And again, could be affected uh, different organ systems, neurologic system, dental, skeletal, muscular, respiratory, and renal, because of accumulation of those substrates which cannot be metabolized due to low alkaline phosphatase uh, activity. And if you look closer to the uh, skeletal mineralization, mineralization defect, so you see in histology uh, a combination of rickets and osteomalacia if you do uh, bone biopsies in those patients. The typical uh, radiographic features of HPP in the very young uh, in, in children is that they do almost have no bone. Look on those features. You cannot. You can hardly see a, a rib. You can hardly see any any bone structures in in the hand. This is the typical features on those uh, infants affected by this disease. Uh, the possible diagnosis I have already shown to you. Now let me let me talk uh, about our. Registry about the, the data collection of almost 20 patients with pr proven uh, genetic uh, uh, dysregulation and genetic uh, uh, deviation uh, in the typical structures. We have four families and we have already uh, 
also got children into our registry. This is, for example, a family you will hear about later. This is how we do the whole workup. And now we included also the, the macroRNAs in those patients. And we do, of, of course, we do gene analysis. And this is the example, this is a, a part of the registry where you see that they are proven genetically and they have those high uh, measurable substrates um, like the PLP, the pyridoxal phosphate or the, the PEA. And please let me remind you, this is like vitamin B6. So uh, with a very easy determination of vitamin B6, you can also uh, find patients with uh, elevated levels. These are uh, the biochemical analysis in those patients, not specific, a part of the low ALP. Uh, you see, we have lowest values of around 6 and even lower, and the highest ones are 30 or just above uh, 30. In children, it's a little bit different. You have to be aware that they have another normal value because it's age age dependent. Uh, and if you look on, on the manifestation in the different organ systems, <coughs> we have fracture patients, we have patients with delayed motor um, development, we have patients with aphragia, with chondrocalcinosis, we have patients with a nephrocalcinosis, recurrent pneumonia, and we have no one patient with a, with a delayed or with a no fracture healing at all since 20 years. These are some examples. This is uh, the alkaline phosphatase of a 45 years old uh, lady. And this is her vitamin B6 uh, level, which is clearly elevated. And for example, this is a case of 32 years of with, with the alkaline phosphatase of 6 and the normal threefold elevated pyridoxal phosphate in the blood. These are typical radiographic uh, uh, signs like cysts, like fissures in the shaft and also uh, sclerotic lesions. This is the patient, 44 years old. This is the gene sequence uh, with a nephrocalcinosis with calcification areas in the uh, gluteal region. This is the bone mineral density, for example, uh, unexplained for decades, for years, and then we found out that she has the genetic proven uh, HPP. And this is also very interesting forget the lumbar spine because these were, were degenerative changes but if you look look on the, on, on the hips then they never responded to any of, of, the, of the medications of the osteoporosis medications and now we found the reason to go to see the HPP. There are no typical uh, changes in the uh, uh, bone architecture in the high resolution analysis uh, hips for example, these are different types of osteogenesis in perfecta. This is HPP, so there is no characteristic. This is uh, the family, the mother with her two uh, childs, and this is the genetic tree of this uh, mother. And the very, very rare event is that the father was also carrier of HPP. This is an event which, uh, which uh, uh, appears, I don't know, one time in, in in thousands of times that both uh, parents are carrier uh, of this uh, gene failure. So from our project the conclusions are that we have atraumatic fractures, they can be the leading finding in the adults. BMD is not really of a, has not really an add value in the diagnosis. We have no typical structure uh, pattern in those. Uh, we see unspecific uh, symptoms in all kinds of patients and 
there are a lot of genetic carriers which are not affected by the disease but can, can, can transfer to later generations. And we have the so-called asphotase alpha now, a synthetic alkaline phosphatase, which is uh, decreasing the accumulation of the substrates and therefore having a good effect on the bond development, on the bond mineralization, and also on the development of neurologic structures because then uh, they can cross the substrate, the, the plasma membrane, go into the cytosol of, of brain cells. If you want. And we, we know from children how effective this medication is, how fast bone develop, development is seen by simple radiographs. So this is a substance we expect that it will be also good in, in adults. This is a patient uh, and she's probably uh, the first adult patient in Austria who will get Aspotase Alpha. Born 66, a non-union fracture since uh, 14 years, having had all kinds of, of interventions, alkaline phosphatase 12, but nobody thought about that during the last 20 years. This could be a disease. Pyridoxal phosphate, very, very elevated given the, the PEA. And then we got the genetic analysis with this heterogeneous splice mutation. And you see this simple fracture which, which has uh, never healed so far in the last uh, 15 years. And we are looking forward how this fracture could, uh, could heal maybe in now in the late phase uh, if we uh, apply this synthetic alkaline phosphatase of this patient. This again, uh, we are so proud of this new university, I have to show it to you uh, twice now. It's a very modern building and this HPP project is also one of the projects uh, run by the Sigmund Freud University of the Medical School in Vienna. Thank you very much. I have uh, two questions. What difference between hypophosphatasia and uh, osteomalacia? Uh, if you look on the alkaline phosphatase, you understand it. Okay. It's high, clinical, and, and, and it's low. Uh, we have 50, 20 patients now. Yeah. We have adult patients. Uh, the development is, is bad of the lung. If we, if we think about children now, yeah, rickets in children, they have uh, a disturbation, a disturb, uh, a development of movement, they have a disturbed development of teeth, they have lung problems, so these are things not occurring in, in rickets, for example. So it's the associated uh, diseases which are probably the most different. What level the 25 hydroxy vitamin D in oh, this patient? It, it's not typically. They can have normal levels, they can have low levels. Uh, it's mixed. It's mixed. What, uh, you, uh, what uh, use uh, drugs for treatment? Uh, to treat those people with osteoporosis, medication is dangerous, is contraindicated. So, you do symptomatic treatment, yes. painkillers, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Yeah. Please question. Uh, are there any HPP patients in Ukraine? Are you aware of any patients? And um, or children? I think uh, the, uh, in Austria, how many patients with hypophosphatase? Well, we think, we th we sh uh, based on statistics, yeah. we should find 50 patients, I think, in Austria. 50? 50, 50 yeah. So far, we have, uh, if we exclude this, the Slovakian patients, we have 10, 15. Well, 
It's a very sophisticated problem, um, and um, uh, oh no, we saw that we have this patient, yes. And uh, after a sophisticated examination, uh, we um, found uh, the cancer induced hypospasphatasia. Mm -hmm. Yes, more frequently, and uh, it's also a great problem because we thought about uh, uh, this uh, cases, yeah, and we maybe lost the time. Maybe the, uh, in our country we have not um, uh, we have not machine who had, uh, which can scan the uh, the imaging with uh, not glucose but. Uh, um, I don't remember in this uh, isotope. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that can uh, definite where the cancer um, can be. Yes, and uh, uh, we have a problem with a lot of symptoms, with this lung problem, but they uh, were not um, specific. Yeah, and uh, um, we, uh, our patient had uh, a problem with bone mineral density. And uh, some of them were treated with osteoporosis, and uh, their density was uh, decreased, and uh, they all have a uh, problem with their teeth. Uh, but in the end, we um, received uh, FGF induced cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please. I just think that looking for adults which have a very weak form of the disease is, is the second step. The first step must be to find the children or the need to pick the nutritionists. But we have to sensibilize the nutritionists. I mean, we have looked on the alkaline phosphodase unit just on this in, in, in particular. Um, how many thousand uh, lab tests? 15,000 15, lab tests. Uh, and, and you you found a hundred with low alkaline phosphatase, but with a whole variety of, of symptoms. But I think the first step is to look for the people with very, very low alkaline phosphatase. Thank you, Professor Josh. Thank you for very nice report and very